My name is Jason Matzinger. Over 10 years ago now, I gave up my job in our family electrical business to try and tell our story better as hunters. It's a good feeling. We're on top of the world. Through the years of doing this professionally, I've run into some challenges I never would have imagined. You see, I grew up hunting public land around my home in southwest Montana. Private land or public land wasn't a topic back then. Then, people suddenly cared where I hunted, and hunting on public land became a lot more complicated. I started to find that no matter where I hunted, I couldn't please anyone. If I hunted on public, I was giving away spots. And if I hunted on private, I was getting spoiled. So this year, I decided to take a further look into this topic. I was going to be hunting exclusively on private this year for elk. And Sam has been working on a project to hunt exclusively on public land. Dreamt up the bus project. Uh, you can see I'm sitting in front of it right now. And I thought that the, uh, turning a school bus into a rolling uh, hunting command center would be a good way to capture the attention of people, not only in the hunting industry, um, but across the board, and uh, raise awareness about what's happening uh, with our public lands and the, uh, the current danger that they may be in. As a public landowner, you know, as somebody who pays taxes and helps pay for national forests and national parks and all of those types of things, the sportsman in me just felt like I needed to do my part to help keep public lands in public hands. And that's why this elk hunt will be on national forests right here in Montana. Do I hunt private land or do I hunt public land? The whole time growing up, it wasn't, we didn't really talk about whether we were hunting public land or private land. I hunt both. I enjoy hunting no matter where the animals are at. Growing up, I did hunt family land for deer. You hunted where the birds were. I grew up hunting national forest land. That's what my family's done for generations, and I love it. When I moved to the West and started uh, doing a lot more big game hunting, it really opened my eyes to the possibilities of hunting on public ground. And even after dreaming up this whole bus project, uh, the devil is always in the details. And so you start to look into what that actually takes. There is nothing more rewarding than being able to walk out your doorstep and enjoy the millions of acres of public land we have and be able to get your elk and walk off that mountain with that elk on your back. There is really no better feeling in the world, and I would not argue that with anybody. Looking back on my past 27 years of elk hunting, I honestly can't remember a morning I didn't enjoy. It didn't matter if my wall tent was set up on public land or on private land. There's just something magical about getting out there and letting out your first bugle of the season. I just want to be your morning light
But I never get cold when it's you I hold When the fire burns down and the embers slow Not only do I have to pay a pretty steep daily fee to be able to commercially film on public property, but I also have to apply for those permits at least two weeks in advance. It's not realistic for us as hunters. Now my free access to all of these millions of acres of public land is no longer free. Take for instance if I'm hunting a chunk of BLM, it's $250 a day plus an application fee. Imagine having to film 180 days at $250 a day. That is, uh, you, you don't come out ahead most of the time on a project like that. I never would have thought when I started doing this that there would be times that I would see elk or deer on public land and could not go after them because I didn't have the proper film permit. I've, I've found that the same guy that says, oh, it must be nice, why don't you come out and hunt where I hunt, is gonna be upset if I come hunt where he hunts and air it in front of millions of people. I know what these areas mean to hunters, to generations of hunters, to families. They're passed on. These honey holes, they're hard to find and they don't come easy. And I'm very sensitive to that. It's really opened my eyes to watching people in the past and why they've been hunting on private ranches and that type of thing. I don't blame them. Having to pay to hunt public ground is not all that appealing. That's the reason it's public. I feel like we should just be able to go out there and use those lands um, for what they can be used Two for. Two days ago it was 90 degrees. I feel like when I can separate and hunt in an area like this, it allows me to enjoy my experience and not worry about ruining it for everybody else. I hunt because I like to hunt. I've been fortunate enough to make a career in this industry, and it's led me down some paths I didn't see myself going. Like I said, I love public land hunting, and there's nothing that gives me more satisfaction in that. However, when you do it commercially, it just, it, it brings up a different side to everything. To say that private land is all the same is like saying all public land is the same. Some private land, there's no hunting. Some of it's limited hunting and some of it is far worse than lots of my favorite public land spots. So just because someone says they're hunting private ground doesn't mean it's any better than the spot you've been hunting for years. It seems like on every video of somebody that has a successful hunt, there's always the question, you know, did you, did you hunt, were you hunting on public or private? And it's, uh, I mean, I've, like I said, I'm a photographer and I have shot photos and filmed on both massive chunks of private and massive chunks of public and the success rate on private land doesn't seem to be that much higher you're still you know hunting the exact same animal and all of the challenges are still there everything happens so fast you do what you think you're supposed to do people need a place to go to release a place to free their mind and a place to do things that we as humans have naturally been drawn to do since the beginning of mankind, and that's hunt and feed our families. And if you take that away from people on any level, whether it's forest service or private land, it's gonna have a dramatic effect in society. So it doesn't matter if you hunt public land or private land. It doesn't matter if you hunt with a bow or with a rifle. If we don't all stand together, 
to continue to support wildlife conservation, to continue to support hunting activities, our voice as sportsmen is going to go away. wild stuff. <clears throat> A little national forest elk brawl. <laughs> elk kill. I don't understand why we put so much focus on whether the hunt was on private or public. The vast majority of hunters across the world are hunting on private land. Just one more thing to put between us as hunters. There's sides to both. And I think moving forward as a hunting culture, as a hunting society, if we don't find a way to embrace that, be more open on our side of the fence as much as we'd like them to be open on their side of the fence. It really does go both ways and I would like to tip my hat to the landowners who have helped take care of this land and, and generations of logging and looking after it and keeping it safe from wildfires. I am a public landowner and I'm proud to be but I'm also very proud of hunting private land. You know whether you're in the Midwest chasing whitetail or you're out west chasing elk and deer, um, the landowners are feeding these herds. And that is, uh, that is not something to be taken lightly. So, you know, next time you're having a conversation with a landowner trying to get on land, you know, thank them for what they do and thank them for, you know, keeping your white-tailed deer population healthy. Thank them for keeping your elk herd, you know, healthy and, and eating on their haystacks that they're dealing with every year. Us as hunters absolutely love that and we reap the benefits. At the end of the day, of the 13.7 million hunters in the U.S., only 1.7 of them hunt exclusively on public ground. And still, we only make up 4% of the U.S. population. There is no right or wrong place to hunt. We're in this together, and hunting is hunting no matter where you enjoy it or how you enjoy it. The landowners need the public land as much as the public land needs the landowners. It's important now, more than ever, that we see things from both sides of the fence.